going live. Okay, we're going live, everybody. You have to accept your record buttons there. Um, great to see you all. Another session, general session, John Lavinia's Success Mastermind, Tuesday, the 21st of September, 2021, which reminded me that we've been broadcasting for over a year now with this great family and this great group of people, which doesn't seem possible really, but uh, that's how quickly time has moved and how quickly the situation around us has unfolded. But uh, there you go. Good to see you. Good to see you, Lindsay, Daisy, <coughs> Jeff and I have been talking. So people are dialing in as we speak. I'm going to launch forth. <clears throat> um, slight to dry throat, so forgive me for that. I'll keep taking water. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about the, the world is upside down, following on from what I said last week. Uh, last week in pillar one, there are two pillars, I'm going to say, two pillars which are the resistance to success. And I talked about pillar one last week in the Thursday session um, when I talked about the fact that, you know, we have all these action points, prioritization systems, efficiency systems, but they're a sideshow. And what I said is that if your purpose is, is um, clear, you, you won't need any of those things will fall into place and you can use those systems as a backup. The problem is that our purpose and our mission has to come first. And this is often not the case. We just keep piling things in alongside what really matters to us until we're swamped and we become increasingly swamped. And then we just try to be more efficient. So I talked about that last week, how, how strong and, and clear this purpose has to be. Um, and I said, really, as a result of that, we're taught upside down thinking. We, we're being sold cures for symptoms rather than solutions to actual underlying causes. And that's really, could, you could summarize modern life in that way. Um, not criticizing the medical profession, but obviously in certain circumstances, they're always trying to give us a cure for the symptom. Sometimes we don't get to the root of the problem and we carry on living the wrong way. Now, I referred last week also to Seneca and Ecclesiastes and Seneca told us quite clearly there's plenty of time in life if we invest it well and we order it well. And I referred also to the frightening statistic that I may only have 1,040 weeks left to deploy based on the 4,000 week book which pointed out that a younger person only has 4,000 weeks, so you better use it well. I better order my time well, really prioritize what I'm doing with those weeks. So we went through all of that and we concluded that without uh, a purpose, no amount of efficiency tools, planning tools, and, and anything else will, will save the position or make any difference at all. We have to be very clear on getting all the dead wood and all the rubbish out of our system before we then focus on the priority things that we then have to order and work on. Um, but we, you know, we get fixated on these tools and we sold these tools and we sold these ideas on the basis they're going to solve the problem. But they don't. The purpose is the driver. And without it, you're going nowhere, round and round in circles with a broken compass. So um, we just get busier and we waste a lot of time. So that was that was the first leg. Now, today, really. The second pillar of upside down thinking is that we're cluttering our brain with feelings and false perceptions, which we're taught to live by and we're brought up to live by. So that was the theme for today. This is the second strand of the upside down thinking idea. We're taught and sold this upside down thinking throughout the whole of our lives from, from a very young age. Um, it's the effect really of going with feelings and experience and preconditioning and responses that we've picked up, learned or had rammed into us by various systems as we go along. And as a result, we just end up looking through the wrong filters at what's going on, piling on stress, worry, piling on layers of life experience that cover up the truth of how things really are and what we can really do and what we're capable of. Um, and we then end up judging ourselves and our abilities this way rather than how other people actually see us and, and our, our own reality. So we can get completely covered in these, these terrible um, pieces of condition that we've picked up and stuck onto ourselves and cluttered our brain with. So this, this can often create a bias and a negativity in our minds, and it just causes anxiety, causes worry, reduces our effectiveness by making us stressed and more worried and more unfulfilled. And then what happens is we actually mask and suppress our own natural ability that we were born with, that we're all born with, and that we all have skills in various directions for. I mean, are you ever aware, for example, that certain circumstances or people cause an automatic reaction in you? Maybe an automatic anxiety, an automatic doubt, an automatic loss of self-confidence. Because certainly 
that can easily happen. And we, we all go through these things where we almost have a, a knee jerk trigger reaction to a circumstance that's coming from our conditioning and the baggage that we're carrying with us. In fact, we all actually started as young creative children, completely free thinking with flair, creativity, originality. And then we end up more and more bound into this preconditioned way of living and reacting to our surroundings that we've been taught or that we've learned through bad experiences. Um, and this can affect all our views of our events we want to take part in, our business plans, our assessment of whether we're able to go forward and succeed. This can really affect us quite badly. Some of this condition, conditioning rather, is actually handed to us during uh, our education, or as some people like to call it, our miseducation. Sadly, the whole system is geared up to produce preordained results for, for, for a mass of people rather than being suited to us. And some of us can get quite badly damaged by that. And some conditioning comes not from the education system, but from our own family and from the society around us and how we're expected to behave or expected to be or expected to look. And we talked about this a bit before. So as a result of all this conditioning, we start living by these collected feelings and experiences, however actually detached they are from the reality of what's going on around us. They're what we see around us or perceive to be going on around us according to that conditioning, not what's actually happening. And they're the result of this conditioned view of the world that we've gained from all these unique experiences we've lived, good and bad, good and bad. Some of them are, are good. So in, in truth, we shouldn't really worry about how and when um, things are going to happen. Uh, how our past tells us the future may be, we shouldn't worry about that because it just creates stress and anxiety. We've got to try and get rid of all this baggage and look to a blank future that we can actually design rather than thinking it's been preordained by this conditioning because we already know what's going to happen. We already know what's going to go wrong. We already know who's going to criticize us. We carry this stuff with us in our brains and on our shoulders. So we could ditch all that conditioning and we could actually focus instead on envisage, envisioning possibilities and possible alternative futures, which is what a lot of people in the group have been trying to do. We can actually revisit our pre-programmed assumptions and challenge them and try and think outside that box we've been put into. These are not the world, these things. They're how we think the world is because we've been conditioned to think it is that way. So in this second pillar of upside down thinking, we've got to be able to clear our mind of all negativity, auto conditioning and other things which just prevent this natural skill, judgment and capacity for doing things coming out. So we actually become less effective and less fulfilled and less good at what we could have done. It prevents us from flourishing. We just get stifled. There's a fog, in other words, there's a fog in our brain. This this fog arises from negativity and conditioning and pre-programmed thinking. The fog doesn't actually change anything as fog doesn't, but it obscures what is really there in front of us. It temporarily obscures the truth, possibilities and obstacles. And when it clears, as fog clears in the real world, everything's still exactly where it was. The world is still as it really was before the fog descended, but now we can actually see it and we can understand it. So if we can disperse that mental fog, then we can see reality and we can actually fulfill ourselves and look at a possibility of a different future that we might not have imagined we were capable of. So that's our challenge really, dispersing that mental fog. And I talked last week, again, about leaving our baggage at the side of the road by life's highway stop sign, the stop sign on life's highway. And this week I wanted to suggest that it's equally important to empty our life's baggage from our mind not just to put it down at the side of the road in terms of cluttered tasks, but to clear our mind, to allow our intuition, our innate capacities, our skills, our feelings and our passions to come through and drive us. Because that's really all we have. That is what makes us who we are. So if we can uncover them and put them to the fore, we will do something quite unique and we will attach and latch onto these things that really are our purpose. So imagine, imagine me carrying around a large suitcase into which I tip all my belongings in a random way. How on earth am I gonna find anything and see the wood for the trees when I open that suitcase at the other end? Well, I'm not going to. And this is what happens with all this clutter and negativity and unordered thoughts and emotions that we pour in from conditioning into our minds. The important things in my mental suitcase end up just being obscured 
or risk being obscured because I can't see the wood from the trees. So what happens really, well, as we move through life and our experiences and we experience reactions and results, we're conditioned to react that way next time, to think that way next time, not to think, hang on, it, it needn't be that way next time. We then overlay all these life responsibilities, financial concerns, bills and worries and fears, fears of failure, fears of retirement, fears of running out of money. And look where we end up. This is where it starts. But look where we end up before we know it. We always react to particular people or situations in a particular way. We always worry about the same thing in the same way rather than doing something about it. We're not even going to try to do certain things or try to deal with certain people because we just can't face it or we think we know what's gonna happen, so we don't bother. And this adds up to a whole perception of life, whether it's positive, negative, stressed, disappointed, et cetera, that we carry around and that really stops us. It's a really effective blocker. And then we're not gonna be in a condition, in the condition we were when we were very young, to just have a go, because we didn't really care. We just had a try, we had a go and enjoyed it, and had a bit of a laugh, it didn't entirely work. Um, and before we took on all those experiences and reactions and bits of baggage and conditioning, this is how we used to think. So can we get back to that? Can we actually get back to freeing up our natural skills and thoughts and passions and let them loose? The, the ones we have way back in the past, these are the ones we were born with and they can, I absolutely assure you, we can all release them again. Let's have a, look, a, few, a few examples just to illustrate what can go wrong. You know, I talked previously about how our condition can hold back progress until somebody, some brave soul is prepared to strip away their conditioning and connect to their inner self and reach out to the future. And I gave once before an example, the example of a flat earth. Nobody but nobody dared sail past a certain point because conditioning in millennia of beliefs told everybody in that preconceived way that it just wasn't possible. They were interpreting what they were seeing experiencing what they'd been told and conditioned to believe that it just wasn't possible that the earth was not flat it had to be flat everyone told us it was flat everything we saw reinforced the fact it must be flat so we just didn't go any further and they really believed and perceived that the earth was flat for millennia but this was not reality it wasn't reality they lived in millennia in a distorted reality of what they were conditioned to believe that wasn't actually reality how crazy does that now sound? Well, actually, it doesn't sound so crazy at all, because that's exactly how many of us live in these reality distortions every day. So think about that. Are we going around as if the earth was flat? Because that's the condition we've really taken on and reinforced ourselves. So we are sitting in a distortion field and our view of the world perhaps is warped. And we're just not going to risk sailing over the edge of the earth, the flat earth into new territory we can't get away from the fact we think it's still flat now the same distortions occurred in terms of the planets revolving around the sun another famous example our ancestors couldn't get over the idea that everything revolved around the earth and not around the sun so at some point we've got to be able to ditch this kind of baggage and preconditioning and what everyone is telling us and rethink and say hang on there's a there's a possibly there's possibly a different outcome there's possibly a different future and if that's what can happen in a global sense, just imagine what sort of distortions can arise in our own brains. So those two are big examples. Just imagine what impact that can have on our own life and our own brain, our own thinking, if we start developing those, those, those thought patterns. So what does all this mean? Well, as a result of all of this, we really look around us, but we often don't see. We just don't see. We see instead what our developed bias tells us we are seeing. We don't challenge it. We don't think, hang on a minute, maybe this isn't quite as it seems or appears. And remember, I gave another example recently of a photograph of a man from the back running towards a woman's back and she was holding a handbag. At that point, the picture drives us to see a handbag thief or a mugger. They then deliberately show us the front of the image from, from the front. The man is now running towards her back to push her out of the way of a falling object, which would certainly have killed her. We now see a hero. So this is all about conditioning, perception. Our automatic reaction to that photograph was, hey, this is a mugger. He's going to attack her. We didn't even stop to think maybe that's not the case because we couldn't, because we got our minds into such a set concrete mode that we couldn't break the thinking. So these developed biases or blocks 
just block our processing, our passions, our innate ability, our inherited natural skills that we were born with. And it blocks our ability to see a possibly different outcome. So this is what I'm calling the upside down thinking and the fact the world is upside down. We've got to get rid of this fog. We have to deploy those natural skills and let them come through. And, you know, I can illustrate again the point by, by telling you I can't even I can't even list the number of people recently who I've tried to explain to that I see them in a different way to the way they see themselves. And so does everybody else, because we start to get so locked into this conditioning. We believe that everyone is seeing us that way. Well, they're not. They see us a very different way and there's nothing to hold us back and succeed. As far as they're concerned, we are perfectly able, successful people. It's us that think we're not. So what if we could get rid of all this baggage conditioning that's covering our minds? Could we actually clothe our minds in new garments and see and try a different outcome? Well, we, we certainly can. We certainly can. And I wanted to reassure everybody that that was the case. To, to sort of conclude, really, on this, I'll, I'll wrap up and open the floor in a minute. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on all of this. Um, the good news is that the fear of a, a future outcome is not the future. That is not the future. That is our fear of the outcome. That's not the future because it hasn't actually happened. We can design the future, work on it and make it happen, but it hasn't yet happened. What we're experiencing is, is, is our fear of what's going to happen in the future. So, you know, we know now that the earth is not actually flat and no amount of perception on our part or anyone telling us it's flat is going to make it flat. It just isn't. Our futures have, have yet to be made. The truth has yet to be made. And it's not yet real. We can make it ourselves and we will make it. So think it, design it, design the future according to this overriding purpose, which you have to be aware of. What is your overriding purpose? Don't think about the fear of what might be. Think about what you would like. Think about what we would all like. We have to, in this upside down world, uh, we have to be prepared to unearth and explore the strong purpose, that one thing, that's what I was talking about last week. When we've got that, then we fix our priorities relentlessly behind and around that one thing. We don't get a whole load of systems to help us take more tasks on the class of the radar. No, that is going to bog you down. Stick to the purpose, then prioritize around that. Then tackle this false conditioning to see the new reality of what we really could do in a new future we haven't yet made. That's there for the taking if we want it. So it isn't a question of what if it goes wrong? It's a question of what would this mean to me if it went right? So take action then and back your perception, your wishes and back your own skill because it's in there somewhere. It's just been buried for a lot of years by the system, education, society, whatever it might be. Experiment then with everything. Try new ideas in your chosen direction. Focus on innovating, trying things a different way. Don't just do it the same way every time. The Einstein quote, doing the same thing every time and expecting a different result is insanity. So try different things. Listen to your market, though. Watch what they're telling you, but try new things. Test ideas in a small way and evolve them gradually. You don't need to do a blockbuster change in one go. Just try new things slowly but surely. So I wanted to say in closing, really, seize your dreams because they are your reality, not what you think the reality is. Your dreams are reality and you can make them real and you can act on them. So let's focus on purpose, which is the first pillar of what I've been talking about in these two pillars. Um, one, you know, we don't have to, to, to we, we just don't take no for an answer. When you've got that pillar, your purpose straight, don't take no for an answer, push for your purpose. Then you can focus on clearing this fog, which is the conditioning that's cluttering your brain and stopping you acting freely on this great purpose that you have. So that, those were my thoughts for today. Um, love to hear anyone's ideas on that. Um, you know, please, please come out and share. But I do believe these two pillars are very strong deterrents, which, which have been stopping people getting clearly forward. Anyone have any, any ideas and thoughts on that? Gail is looking pensive. <laughs> oh, Gail, come and uh, share your idea. Oh, Gail's got to go. Gail's got to go. Goodbye, Gail. So anyone, um, anyone want to share their ideas? I know, um, Ali, did you have any thoughts? I know you Yeah, were... lovely. Thanks, Adrian. Um, I, I can see how it is just deep, 
absolute ultimate thing of having your um, your belief system and your subconscious mind aligned with what you're trying to do. Uh, it, the, the power of the mind is everything, isn't it? I mean, it's just 95% mind, 5% action. Um, and what we think about is what we, uh, what, what then continues. Obviously, we've been talking a lot about this, of in, into, into action through our bodies and then our results. Um, I think my biggest thing now is that, is, is working out what filters I'm looking through, you know, through what perceptions and what things from my past and um, you know, just, just what other people have told me about me, um, all of those kind of things that build up that um, warped self-image um, and build up those things that stop you doing things. So, yeah, what, what, how crucial it is to have that because I think you can, you can just continue to think that you're doing everything on your conscious mind, but uh, and think that you've got through things, think that you've got through various bad self images things, but unless it's sunk into your subconscious mind then it won't actually affect your results. I think that's the, the key thing for me that I've been learning recently. I think that's a brilliant summary. Brilliant summary, Ellie. I mean, it, yeah, what other people tell you, what other people tell you about yourself is one of the biggest sources of conditioning that we have to live with and that can affect us quite badly. You know, it, we've got to develop awareness that that is happening, that it's happened to us and that we're actually living every day through a filter because our emotions are filtering the truth of what's really going on and how people see you. People can see us in so many different ways that we're not aware of, yet we think we're only one way and that everyone sees us that way, which is far from the truth. Uh, and we take all these things we've been told, as you say, and they're in there in our subconscious holding us back. So, you know, we've got, we've got to learn to be aware that that's happening and say, no, it's not that way. That is not the way things are. The way things are is the way I'm going to make them. So this is what I'm going to try and do. And I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to adjust as I go. You know, he or she who dares wins. If you don't try, nothing's going to change. But if you stop and listen to the critics and the people that have told you things, we're not even aware of it anymore. This has gone on maybe so many years ago that it's an automatic knee jerk reaction we've got that we've picked up and kept. And we're not even aware of. So it's, it takes a real effort to shake ourselves out of these preset beliefs and conditionings and go for it. So I absolutely agree with everything you said, Ali. That's that's a great summary. Great summary. Anyone to, else want to? Uh, to sorry, can I just Ellie, ask yeah. something? So from going from, would you think the way to change those preconceptions is about visualizations, auto suggestion, all those affirmations? That those are the ways. For me, it is about this visualization. It's about foreseeing a different future because but I have to have my purpose straight first if that purpose isn't straight I'm not going to release this massive energy and power that we all have in us because we're all incredibly powerful and the human race is powerful if we use that power in the right way or if we allow it to be released and harnessed so first of all I've got to have this purpose which generates the power in the first place and frees it but then I have to be able to apply it and do things by envisioning a future by looking at what the outcomes might be not as i've been saying by this conditioning saying no it's definitely going to happen this way it's going to go wrong because these are my beliefs this is what's going to go wrong so and so is going to do this that's not going to work i'm going to get in difficulty there if we can just look and harness up to the future around this purpose then we've got more than enough skill and the bits we don't have, we will gain because we are very determined. Humans are incredibly determined. You put somebody in a survival situation where they have to survive, they miraculously find depths of strength they never even dreamt they had. It's in us all, and we can deploy it when we choose to, but there's got to be a powerful enough motive. So this is where the envisionment comes in because we've got to see that future vision 
to boost that motivation and to release that energy and to direct it like a laser to that purpose and that future. That's how I see it anyway, Ali. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm, no, perfect sense. Thank you, Adrian. Great. Great. I'm not sure anyone else. Lindsay, did you uh, did you want to chip in? Haven't heard you for a while. Yes. How, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks. Good. I was saying, you know how you say we're conditioned by everything around us. Do you remember back when, I don't watch TV anymore, but back when, um, well, I have to say Alf came on, but it back when it would go to commercial, it would say, and now we're back to regularly program, wait a minute, re regularly scheduled programming. I was like, how blatant was that? You know, yeah. I mean, they just, they just put it out there. Back to regular scheduled programming. Yep. If you really think about it, that's kind of scary. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've just, I've thought about that a lot, actually, thinking they were, because there's no telling what they were programming us with. Um, but at the end of the day, I like to not go to bed with any of that clutter on me. But I, I have a imaginary virtual assistant i go hand off all my my problems my unresolved issues i hand them off to her and then i go to bed with knowing that they're taken care of so that's one thing i do but you uh, this is such a great topic i'm just really enjoying this i love that idea lindsay you're handing over to the virtual assistant that's a great idea but you, you're so right about this uh, blatant conditioning um, you know, the experiment that's been done many times, one person walks to the corner of the street and just stands staring at the top of a tall building. And before you know it, 50 people are standing around them staring at the top of the tall building. They don't even know why. But we're all naturally programmed and herded into these ideas that we follow what everyone else is doing. Same thing when you see everyone waiting at one point in the street to cross when there's an easier way of crossing, but nobody thinks they just follow the others. It, we, we have this natural herd instinct as well in us and it takes a lot to break it and to say hey i've been conditioned here wait a minute it needn't be this way i can change the future i can change my future actions and we have to be prepared to think like that outside the box and go for it absolutely right and i i think your your example of the adverts and the programming and normal programming resuming it yeah it's all around us everything that we do in society is in these ordered little boxes and preset behaviors, including marketing, which of course tries to profit by that. Um, so agree with you, Lindsay, and um, glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. Anyway, good Thank to see you. you, good to hear you as well. Thank you, you too. Uh, thanks, we, Ingrid's got a hand up. Great to hear from you, Ingrid. Hi there, I came in late, but um, I loved what I heard and I just wanted to add a kind of a funny anecdote to um, the following people sheepishly thing. So one time we were coming back from a tour in, um, oh God, where were we? I think we were in, we were in Japan, I think. Anyway, it was a super long flight and we arrived at O'Hare and, um, or maybe it was LAX, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I got off the plane and I kind of looked like I knew what I was doing, which is, was totally not true, but I just set out with, I was just, we had to catch the next flight. So I just headed off briskly and started marching and everyone in the orchestra followed me just because everyone was so brain dead from this flight and no one thought, and even the tour managers followed me and we ended up missing the flight to get to New Jersey to get to Montreal because no one even, I was wrong and no one questioned it. I just walked with chutzpah and uh, yeah, it was a total mess. <laughs> I love it, Ingrid. I love that story. And, you know, but it's so true, isn't it? It's, and that's what I was saying. We all live like this every single day, no matter how crazy it seems when you stand back and look at why you did it. We all do it every day. We follow herds. We follow people. We follow conditioned responses. And we don't always stand back and challenge them. As Ali was saying, you know, you, you've got to be able to. And we were talking about with Ali, you've got to be able to envision the future and, and, and a different outcome, because otherwise we just end up in a in a preordained place that we were going to end up in because we didn't bother to change things. It's just stasis being held in, um, having no momentum to break out. So I, lo I love that illustration in Chris. And yeah, you know, how many times has that happened? 
the person looking at the tall building, you leading the whole orchestra in the wrong direction. Um, it, people are very vulnerable. We are all very vulnerable to that kind of reaction. And we're all conditioned to follow and, and until we develop the mindset that our purpose is so important to us that we cannot actually, out of respect for our purpose and ourselves, let that happen anymore. So we have to break that kind of programming and coding in our brain if we're going to succeed at our purpose. That's what I really believe. Hence these two pillars that I've been talking about this week and last week of, of friction. There are two frictions preventing us from succeeding. One of them is not having that purpose in the first place. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Ingrid. I'm not sure if anyone else wanted to dive in. Pleased to see some familiar faces. And yeah, I had to say, actually, that we've been broadcasting for over a year. There's Ace. Good to see you, Ace. We've been broadcasting Ace for over a year, believe it or not. Time has gone very quick. So uh, I'm very pleased to see people getting forward, dialing in and, and all the ideas that have been shared over a year later. Quite something, really. Quite something. Fantastic family we've got here. This is amazing. How are you doing, Ace? I'm doing swell. Thanks for the subject. It's uh, something that I have to work at all the time is to not believe that I can't. For some reason, all my life, I've always, I can't do that. I can't do that. You know, I have right out of the gate, I have this war going on of whether I can or whether I can't. And it's, it's a, you know, it's pretty hard to beat sometimes, but I don't know where the programming came in from, but it's there. And I could, I, I think about this kind of stuff a lot, but you can go back, clear back to your childhood. You didn't, I never thought I could do a lot of things. That I've done. And, you know, getting involved in different things and is one reason I've been successful at a few things. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, the last year, I've really grown a lot. And, you know, it's primarily primarily because of this group and the daily um, messages that we receive that we can, you know. And it's just, it's been, I wish I would have even been exposed to this, this type of um, information decades ago, you know. I think life would be even a lot better. But anyway, thanks for coming in. I always love every every one of your shows. It's um, always enlightening. That's very kind of you, Ace. And you know, it's great to hear that it's it's made a difference. Any of these these uh, these broadcasts we've had have made a difference. And you know, anytime you want to talk, Ace, let's talk because I know there's nothing you can't do in line with your purpose if you choose that purpose and want to go for it. I know that, and I really believe that. So. It is, as you say, digging back to childhood, saying, well, what stopped us? Where did it go wrong? In the sense that somebody put us off track. We lost contact with our true feelings, our true ambitions and our true passions and loves. And somewhere we went down the wrong fork in the road. Why did that happen? When did it happen? You can reverse that. We can have a go. And you don't need to pile all in with you know, everything on red. You can just go in and start trying things in a small way, tweaking them and developing them, see how you feel about them without having to overcommit in one go. Once we're clearer and we've got a bit more skill and we know where we're going, then we can start to commit more resource and more effort and push for it. But you've got to start somewhere. If you don't try, you won't know, you know whether, whether it was your true purpose. You've got to try and act on it every single day. One tiny thing, Ace, anything. You know, If it's picking up the guitar or whatever, you just at least play a chord a day, learn a chord a day, learn a song a week. Whatever you are going to fix on, Every day we have to act on it in however a tinier way, because tiny things for 365 days add up to a huge pile. So right. it's doing something every day, not saying, well, there's my purpose, but maybe I'll act on it next month. And then you say, well, I've done a bit this month. Maybe next month I'll have more time. That's your purpose, Ace. So why wouldn't it be priority one? Why sure. wouldn't it be on top of the pile with then all the priorities around it, organizing priority? but not letting everything else in life saying, hey, wait a minute, this priority, don't worry. Just, just do these silly side jobs first and leave your passion to the next month when maybe you'll get half a day or an hour. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? And we all do it. We all do it. We've got to fix this purpose so strongly that we know what it is. And then we say, that is where I'm starting every day. That's going to be in my day, whatever it takes. And once we get that feeling, it's amazing how quickly we can start to move. It really is. But we instead, as I said last week in the first part of these 
this pillar discussion upside down world, all we do is we try and get more efficient so we can take on more tasks so we can bury our purpose in a bigger <laughs> pile of tasks. Now, how crazy is that? And that's what we all do. Use this efficiency system, this online planning system, this action point manager. Use this three, five, one task plan. Use five priorities a day system, 12 week planning. It's all great, but only if it's behind and supporting your key purpose. That's it. That key purpose has got to be protected from all these silly other tasks. They've got to be crammed into what's left. That's what I really believe. So I think you'll see a difference, Ace. Talk anytime. Give me, give me a, send me a message. You can talk anytime. I know Thanks you can do it. I know you can do it. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be. Thanks okay, a lot. Ace. Great to hear from you. Great to hear from everybody. I'm not sure if anyone else wanted to say anything at this point. Um, if not, we'll have a shorter session today um great to see you all thank you for the contributions thanks lindsay that was great insights and ali as well and ace um enjoyed hearing from you all so i'm going to sign off i should say in a housekeeping sense it's corporate curios tonight 5 p.m eastern time us with eva i think that's 10 p.m uk time for uk listeners so sharing really experiences of life in a corporate setting team issues, management issues, people behavioral issues. It's a whole host of useful pointers and discussions around how we can tackle uh, what confronts us in business and in the corporate world. Very, very useful and, and beyond actually. Very, very useful sessions if you can dial in. 5 p.m. Eastern tonight with Ivia Barnabas, Corporate Curios. Great session today, thank you very much. I'm gonna sign off and hope to see you later. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for all your contributions. Bye for now. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.